This is part one of two of the Oracle Data Integration Live Lab. <clears throat> the, so in this lab, we uh, the narrative is we're going to ETL customers, revenue, and employee data into Autonomous Data Warehouse. We're going to identify the revenues generated by the customers and the respective employees handling those customers. <clears throat> So let's. So in the part one, we will set up the prerequisites for setting up the data integration workspace, uh, namely setting up the uh, networking properly, and then uh, setting up the uh, object storage uh, bucket, which will be our source and the data integration flow, and then our uh, setting up our Atomic Data Warehouse and our new user in our Atomic Data Warehouse um, with custom privileges, as uh, uh, which will have target uh, tables in there, and that will be our target uh, source for our data integration flow. <laughs> so, after doing that, we will um create the uh right policies for OCS uh for the data integration workspace and not only that to be able to use the uh object storage uh staging environment um and then at that point we will conclude part 1 after we create the object storage and ADW data assets so let's get started so go to virtual cloud networks. You want to create a VCN, give it a name, choose a compartment. I'm just doing root throughout my demo. Select a CIDR block. You can do just copy and paste this one here if you want. Uh, you can optionally use a DNS. Uh, I wouldn't do IPv6 for this. It takes 10 minutes of revision. That's why I've already done it. I'm going to use Gogi as mine. You want to create a public subnet. And then, uh, so just give it a name. Do regional. Uh, give it a CIDR block. Uh, specify a route table. Um, and then we're going to configure this route table afterwards. Make sure it's a public subnet. Leave DNS checked. Click uh, select default DHCP options, and then click create subnet. So the next thing uh, we're gonna want to do after we create our subnet is go to Service Gateway, and we're gonna want to create our Service Gateway and the root compartment. And we're gonna make sure make sure to do all services in the region, not just for object storage. And then, so after that, finally, we're gonna go to our route table. Um, just, add a route rule, service gateway, destination. This is important, make sure it's, again, it's all re, uh, resources in the region. Our target service gateway there, optional description, click create. I've already done this in Gogi, so we'll just terminate this one. So now we've set up our network uh, to be able to use data integration. Next, we're going to, we are going to uh, provision our Tanj data, data warehouse. Which is our target. Make sure in root, click create a Tonish Data Warehouse. You can give a display name. Um, choose the Data Warehouse flavor, shared infrastructure, leave the defaults for configure the database, create a password, make sure you remember this password because you're going to be using it a lot. Choose secure access from everywhere. Choose license included and optionally enter your email for notifications and announcements. 
So it takes about 10 minutes to provision. So I've already done that. So this is the one a database I've done under the uh, specified on this specifications. And next you want to click down DB connection, download the wallet. I've already made sure it's instant wallet. Um, and then these are our service level names. We're going to, uh, this will come into play later for demo. I'd recommend the low service level. Um, make sure you click download wallet. I'm just not doing it cause I've already done it. Next, you're going to go to, to our database actions menu. And we're going to go to database users. We're going to see beta. Uh, if you adjust provision the database, beta would not be there. That's the user I created. So let's go to SQL development window where I created the user. So if you were to start from scratch, uh, you would run this command here, these commands here, click change password to the password you specified when you created the autonomous data warehouse, click run. Uh, it would work. You see it's not working because I already created it. Um, make sure, and again, make sure you do all these in the admin user so it has the proper permissions, not the beta user. So that would work. And then from the zip file from the live lab, from the SQL, we're going to enter all this good stuff here. You may have to enter it one table at a time. Let's see it compiled. So now we can refresh our browser. Go to our beta user. We can see all these uh, target tables that we just loaded in um, from our SQL commands from the SQL file. <clears throat> and then finally, we're going to do uh, And I want to do grant create session to beta beta user grant succeeded that way we can create se uh, sessions with this user now our ADW is primed now for the final piece before we go to policies is our Auto storage bucket. You see, I already have mine here. Just leave all this default standard here. Now we're going to upload objects from the specified file. Everything except the SQL file.
after this, we're going to check out policies. And then after policies, we'll create our DI workspace. And then finally, we will create our data assets for part one. And then in part two, we will create our data loader task, two data flows, an integration task, a SQL task, create the application, a pipeline, and publish the task. And then finally, run the data loader task and schedule and run a pipeline task to finish out the lab. So now let's go to policies. Well, first, first you're going to actually go to data integration. And you want to do create workspace, just give it a name. Make sure you choose the VCN that you optimized. Um, leave enable private network checked. Use public subnet, optional DNS. Um, it would take about 10 minutes to provision, so I've already done that with these exact same specifications. And let's say you and a list of policies would come up. Um, so let's just go to our pol and then. You want to, for the, this is required for the policies, you want to need to copy your OSID of your data integration workspace, and you're going to want to paste that in so, a lot of the policies. So save that somewhere. And then now let's go to our policies. This is for data integration. Edit policy statements. Click advanced. You can see I've uh, added all the permissions for IDCS administrators, administrators, the Ceres data integration, and here is uh, some commands where we will enter our data integration workspace OSID, as well as down here as well. And I will share these policy statements. Um, next, we're going to get our tenancy OSID for creating the data assets. Uh, so we're going to copy that, save that somewhere. And now we can go back to data integration. Go to workspace, data integration. Just go ahead and delete these. So now you can see we're starting with a clean slate. So once we get in here, the first thing we're gonna, before you even create a project, the first thing we're going to do is create an object storage data asset. You can see all the supported options. We're going to select object storage. This is where we're going to enter our tenant OSID. That's why we copied it down just prior to this. And you want to, as soon as you enter it, you want to unselect it, and then the namespace will be uh, auto generated, <coughs> as, same, as well as the region. Enable policies, we've already done that. If you haven't, you can do that here. Um, doesn't create all of them as necessary, but we do default connection and test connection. So we create our object storage data asset. 
And then for the last part of um, part one, we are going to want to create uh, the autonomous data warehouse asset. Upload the wallet that we downloaded from the DB connection. Enter our wallet password that we use upon autonomous data warehouse creation. Enable policies here. If we haven't, we have connection. For audit store, it's always going to be default. For uh, ADW, it's always going to be beta in this lab. Username beta, password, same one you used to provision, or same one, one that you used when you ran those SQL commands and changed out the actual password, uh, the actual name password, alias. We're going to go service level low for demo purposes, default staging location. Now, this is where you'll see if you actually set it up correctly. So, object storage. Default connection, choose our compartment. We're always going to do root in this demo. And the bucket will st be stuck on loading if you didn't set up the policies and uh, everything correctly beforehand. But now we see select an option. Um, let's do a XYZ. Test the connection. Actually, we do ABC. So we've uh, next actually to round it off, we're going to create our project. So go back to our main tab. Very important to keep these clean. Uh, so we don't need to get jumbled up. Click project. And project is really just a container for our design time resources, such as our tasks, data flows, and pipelines, which we will go to in the follow up video. Um, leave create sample artifacts unchecked. And now. We have set up our project. So you can see it here. So to recap, we first set up our networking uh, to use data integration. Then we prepare, uh, provision and prepared our autonomous data warehouse by uh, provisioning the instant data warehouse instance, connecting to the wallet, running the SQL commands to get the target tables as well as the grant set, uh, sesh, uh, permission and creating the beta user itself. And then we created our object storage bucket with the JSON and CSV slash flat files. And then we created all the necessary policies to use data integration and the specified services and data integration. We created our object storage asset, our ADW data asset. And we finally, finally we ended with creating a project and our data integration workspace. And to clarify, our workspace is just keeping with the theme of modularity. So you can break it down by compartments, act as logic, logical folders for the tenancy, um, and even within the outer scope of uh, data integration. And then it cascades down to workspaces, and then it cascades even further down into projects. So you could have multiple projects in one workspace. Uh, multiple workspaces in the same compartment. So that is the conclusion of part one. Uh, just to reiterate, in part two, we will go over creating the uh, the tasks, the flows, then the application, then the pipeline, then publishing the task, and then running the task, and then uh, f finally at a, sp a specified scheduling time.